Hi, I'm Mallory Nye, and welcome to this first episode of the Histories Inc. podcast series. This episode is just going to be an introduction to give you an idea of what to expect from it and who am I and what we're going to be talking about over the next episodes. So, thanks for tuning in. The name for this podcast series is taken from a less well-known quote from the 19th century writer Mark Twain, who said that the very ink with which all history is written is merely fluid prejudice. This is taken from his book Puddin Head Wilson and Other Tales. This phrase is perhaps a little obscure. The very ink with which all history is written is merely fluid prejudice. In short, it means that what we choose to put down and to represent as history is the product of our own prejudices, whoever we might be. It is fluid. It is in motion. It becomes something in the process of being written down. I came across this phrase as I was planning this new history-based podcast. It sums up to me much of what interests me about history. We see in history our own prejudices, our ideas, our present. It concurs with the idea of history as fictions, as things we see in the past reflecting on our present. For me, the study of history is in many ways a mapping of the present, what academics sometimes call cartographies of the present, mapping out and understanding what went before so we can see more clearly what is in front of us. When we talk about the past, we cannot help using what we see as a mirror on what we are living in the present, either to contrast with the present day, very often in a sense of how much more barbarous things were in past days, or otherwise to help us to understand the many things that have brought us to where we currently are. This is what fascinates me in history, how so many things we take for granted are indeed historical. They came into being at a particular time, and usually through particular forces, some deliberate, some accidental, most of which we tend to forget. In many ways, history is a form of tourism. It takes us to places beyond our normal lives. It has been said that the past is a foreign country, even our past, the history of our own society. People were different back in the day. They spoke in ways that we would not find familiar, and often took for granted things that surprise us now. History also is very often appealing because of its drama. Through historical accounts we can relive the lives of others, as we do in movies and TV dramas. It doesn't have to be through the medium of historical fiction. Very often it is the historical biography itself that takes us to the person, in all its truth. Of course, so often history is about the powerful and wealthy, which gives us a sense of vicarious personal empowerment through such historical figures. We feel powerful, living out the lives again of kings and queens of the past. History is also about narrative. It tells us stories. It is the story within history. In many ways, the stories are both a help and a hindrance in our pursuit of understanding, or even just knowing about the past. A good story has its own power. We'll believe it and engage with it, perhaps more often than we like. This power of the story will bury and obscure the truth, what actually happens. So, how do you want your history? As a tale well told, or as it really was? Even better, if we try to prevent either getting in the way of the other. It is said that one of the golden rules of studying history is to always remember the particularity of the historical period. That is, at any particular time, people and behaved and thought in ways on the basis of what they then knew. Few people in the British colonies of America in 1700 would have expected the place to become the independent United States. Likewise, things we now take for granted, instant communication, fast travel, electronic entertainment, were all unthinkable or purely fictional imagination just a century ago. Just because we now have the benefit of knowing that the American and French revolutions happened, that slavery was abolished, that the British Empire expanded and then collapsed, 
knowing with hindsight that all of these things would transpire, is quite different from the mindset of those who were caught within the histories before they happened. Each person in history shares that sense of how we ourselves look to the future. Who knows what the world would look like in ten years or twenty or fifty or a hundred years? Likewise for the person living in 1780 or 1560 or 1850. For me, though, it is the connectedness of history that I find so interesting, together with the amnesia that occurs so much as the years go by. Each generation tends to lose sight of its most immediate past. In the second decade of the 21st century, it now seems that the 1950s and 60s are a long time ago. So much has happened in the intervening decades that it can appear that the whole world has turned upside down during that time. Of course, the further back we go, the more different it appears. Now the world of the 1910s and 1920s seems so remote and distant from the present day that historical TV dramas are made about it, such as Downton Abbey. But when we break down the time that has passed, there are real connections to be made. I don't consider myself old, but I came into the world during the 1960s. That world helped to shape me. It was certainly the world, the only world that I knew in my early years. And the distance between the 1960s and today, around about 50 years, is the same distance as that between the 1910s and the 1960s. That is, the world of the 1960s had a similar relation to the era of the Great War and Downton Abbey as we have today with the 1960s. Each of these periods of history are not distinct islands, separate from each other. They build on each other. They are connected by the lives of the individuals who lived across them and were shaped by the changes and developments that happened around them. I didn't live through the Great War, even though my children might think I'm old enough to remember the dinosaurs, but I have lived through each decade from the 1960s until now, and my grandparents lived through the decades from the Great War until the late 20th century. That is what history is made of, people living in their times and across their times, each passing on the baton to later generations. If only we could be a Methuselah, or have had a philosopher's stone such as Nicholas Flamel that has enabled us to live all the ages of time one by one. We could have great wisdom, learning again and again the lessons of history, or otherwise great weariness at the longevity of time. Thus history, the study of history, the exploration of history, is a way of convincing ourselves, almost, that we are cheating death. We are able to know and to remember through gaining knowledge and learning about what went before we were around to see it. To do so, we have to stand on the shoulders of others, who were themselves standing on others' shoulders before them, and on and on. In reality, as we look backwards or downwards from the top, there is simply too much to take in. What we have instead are impressions, trends, bits and pieces. What is there are simply fluid prejudices the things we see and look at through our own lenses, based on our interests or expectations or our engagement with what has gone and been before. None of us are free from prejudices. We all paint things in our own particular colours. What we can do at least is try to keep that in our perspective, if we can, to recognise our background, who we are, and the influences on us, largely feed into and influence where we stand and what we think and write. Fluid prejudice is not so much of a problem when we recognise that is what we are looking at. If we assume that the ink of history is dry and sealed, untouchable and immutable, then we fail to see our fluid prejudices within the flow of knowledge and understanding. So what am I going to be doing in this Ink of History podcast series? Well, my aim is to explore different bits and pieces of history. I'm not a trained historian. I'm an academic with a background in the contemporary, in social anthropology rather than history. But I have a love of history and of understanding the contemporary through the history. Thus my aim is to bring out the contemporary in what I talk about, sometimes explicitly, sometimes less so. In some ways, the relevance of the history 
will be more in terms of the cumulative rather than the particular. To help with this, I have various broad themes that most of my podcasts will cluster under. These will most likely grow and develop as I get going, but they start as follows. History of Empire and Encounter Colonialism and the European Encounter Exploring the Reformation The Religious, Social and Political Changes in Europe in particular of the 16th century Europe and Islam Slavery, the Indelible Stain and the Legacy of Racism A History of Scotland and as a subset of that, Perth, the city of Perth in Scotland, in history. As we go through the podcasts, these will inevitably overlap at times. For example, I am interested in the connections in Scotland with the slave trade, and the particularities of the Scottish Protestant Reformation. Some podcasts will therefore focus on one theme alone, whilst many will engage across two or more themes. I will speak in more detail about each of these themes in the first few episodes of this podcast series to start us off on a long voyage of exploration into the past that will lead us continually back to the present. As you will see, although these themes are broad and take us in many directions, there will be common elements and a core of interest running through it all. My interest in the varieties of British histories, in particular as a united nation and in its parts, with a relation to colonialism, expansion and empire building, and the encounters and levels of knowledge that have come to us through that filter are probably most central to the fluid prejudices that I bring to my selection of this material. And one of the general core issues from the themes will also be directly related to this idea of fluid prejudice itself. As an academic, I have a keen interest in diversity, I was for a number of years a professor of multiculturalism, for whatever that means, and I have published books and papers around this topic. For me, the study of history is about the encounter with diversity, with difference, not only on the basis of the past being different from today as a foreign country, but also by the differences and challenges of diversity fueling the changes that have brought us through history to where we are today and how such differences were encountered and understood in the past has itself a bearing on these issues in today's world. In that sense, the ink of history as fluid prejudice has been about changing prejudices, changing views of difference that may sometimes shock or surprise us. The colonial encounter is a large part of this, as of course is the long history of encounter and engagement, as well as conflict between Europe and Islam and Muslims. Not only do our own prejudices shape how we ourselves engage with that past, we should also learn about the fluid prejudices within history itself. And to conclude, it did occur to me that it was a little misleading, perhaps, to name a podcast in relation to the ink of history. In many ways, a podcast is the opposite of ink. It relies on different, sound-based technologies of communication rather than literacy and printing. But I see this podcast as part of the long, long process of spilling the ink of history in its own particular way. And of course, the other part of this is the emphasis on history, the story of history, both his story and her story, the narratives of the great and the less great women and men of the past. This story has been told in ink and by word of mouth, and this is my humble contribution to that retelling of those stories of history through the flow of my own thoughts, ideas and prejudices. I hope you enjoy being part of the telling as we go through this podcast series. And, if you are interested in this further, have a look at my website, ballerinai.com forward slash histories inc. On my website, you will also find details of my other podcasts, in particular my general podcast, Ballerinai Writer and Academic, and my podcast on religion, titled Religion Bites. These are all at malloryandi.com forward slash podcast. You can also find these podcasts for subscription on iTunes or Stitcher. That's it for now. See you next time. Bye for now.